Hi, and uh, welcome to our uh, live stream from Mount Sinai School of Medicine about FlexMed. My name is David Muller. Um, I'm here with two medical students, Sonia and Ronnie, and the three of us are going to be talking to you for about the next half hour, 45 minutes, about our new FlexMed program. So thank you for joining us. I'm just going to read to you that um, if you want to email questions, you can send them to explore at mssm.edu. Um, if you want to view this live stream at a later date, you can go to www.icon.mssm.edu backslash live stream. And to join the live conversation, please just click the join button on the upper right hand corner of your computer screen. So um, we know we've got a lot of people who have logged in and are watching and want to be able to um, interact with us today. And uh, I think there's a pretty wide range of folks from high school students to college students and pre-health advisors. So what I was going to do is spend a minute or two just giving you um, a very broad overview about the medical school in general and then let Sonia and Ronnie talk a little bit about their experience here and then we'll talk about FlexMed. So um, let's start with Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Uh, first, we're now the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, thanks to a very generous gift from Carl Icon. He donated $200 million to the school, and in honor of that um, very generous donation, we're now the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. We're located in New York City, uh, in Manhattan. Um, we sit really on the, the border between one of the nation's richest neighborhoods, the Upper East Side of Manhattan, and one of its poorest, East Harlem, and then Central Harlem. and so. Um, People who come to care for patients here or train here as medical students see an incredible diversity of patients during the course of their time here. Um, we have an unbelievably large research enterprise. We're sitting actually right now in a brand new half million square foot research building. Um, we're ranked number 18 by the NIH and by US News and World Report. So we've got a very, very successful uh, research and science base here. And at the core of what we do really, our heart and soul is um, serving the underserved and providing care and uh, clinical research and education to people who are in greatest need. Um, that's probably our greatest source of pride and I would say that in principle that's what the institution is all about. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our Humanities and Medicine program and then FlexMed, but after Sonia and Ronnie have had a chance to talk to you for a couple of minutes. So Sonia, do you want to start? Sure. So my name is Sonia Shadravan and I am a current second year at Mount Sinai. Um, I got into Mount Sinai through the Humanities and Medicine program, which I think in its principle is very similar to what the FlexMed program will be, but hopefully the FlexMed is a little better even. Um, I studied at Barnard College undergrad. I majored in Africana Studies and minored in Women's Studies. Um, and prior to coming to New York City, I grew up in Swaziland in Southern Africa, as well as Cambodia and Thailand. Hi. My name is Ronnie Tisdale, and I'm a second year at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, now Icon School of Medicine as well. Um, I'm doing the MD-MPH program, um, and I grew up in Perrysburg, Ohio, and I went to college at Stanford University, double majoring in both drama and human biology, and I'm really enjoying my uh, experience here at Icon. So um, I'm going to describe just for a minute what the Humanities and Medicine program has been like, and then the basics of FlexMed, and then we're happy to take questions from all of you. So we started Humanities and Medicine program about 25 years ago. Um, mainly the reason that it was started is concern from ed educators at Mount Sinai that the pre-med preparation for medical school was doing as much harm as good. That people were required to take courses that didn't really make sense in terms of their preparation for being a physician or even for being a scientist. Uh, that the MCAT exam was potentially doing as much harm as good, and we wanted to attract people to medical school who otherwise might not have considered becoming a physician because of those obstacles. So in HUMED, in the Humanities and Medicine program, um, students were able to apply as sophomores in college, and right after their interview in sophomore year, they'd get an answer. So there would be an early assurance of admission to medical school. We were looking for people who were humanities majors only because we wanted to diversify people's educational backgrounds in a medical school class. Um, and students then, once they were accepted, did not have to take a lot of the traditional science courses and did not have to take the MCAT exam. That was the basic principle of HUMED. Um, now, 25 years later, a quarter of our class comes in through that program, and we've tracked carefully outcomes um, for success in medical school as well as future success in careers. And we know that HUMED students have done at least as well as their peers who took a more traditional path to medical school. So from that, we've launched FlexMed. And FlexMed is essentially an expansion of the HUMED program because instead of just being for humanities majors only, we've expanded it so that we're now going to take applications from any majors 
across the board, including traditional pre-med majors, um, with a particular interest in people who are doing majors in computational sciences like mathematics, physics, engineering, and also a particular interest in students who have humanities majors. It will be an early assurance program with applications in sophomore year, and once students are accepted, they will not take many of the traditional pre-med requirements and they will not take the MCAT exam. Um, and the other expansion is that it will go from being a quarter of the class, which is what HUMED is now, to being up to half of the class within a couple of years. So those are the basics of FlexMed. There are a lot more details that you probably have questions about. Um, so we are happy to answer them. Again, if you um, want to email your questions, you can send them to explore at mssm.edu. If you want to view the live stream at a later date, you can go to www.icon.mssm.edu backslash live stream. Um, and to join the live conversation now, just click join in the upper right hand corner of your computer screen. Great. So uh, the first question that came in is to is asking you to please describe the ideal candidate for the FlexMed program. So the question is what uh, makes for the ideal candidate? And um, it's a little bit of a tricky question to answer because uh, the last thing that we want is to create a cookie cutter ideal candidate for medical school. What we want is as broad a diversification of people coming into medicine as possible. So you may be um, a younger student or an older student. As long as you're a sophomore in college, you can be from any major. Um, and the, again, the, the, the majors that are have interested us in human are the humanities and arts and social sciences majors. Um, and we're moving more and more to an interest in the computational sciences as well. What we're looking for really are, are people who are not, academic, not, only, not only academically strong, but are self-starters and are leaders in whatever it is that they've decided to do well. So people who um, have pushed themselves to do more and have shown the ability to move from participation in whatever it is, whether it's science or drama or global health, um, and develop that into a greater set of responsibilities and have become leaders in their field. It's a little bit hard to do that by the time you're a sophomore in college, but clearly there are people who over the course of high school and even the beginning of college have begun to show us signs of a maturity and ability to have leadership skills, and that's really what we're looking for. Okay, uh, the next question is for the students, and it is, how did you hear about HUMED and what was the benefit? So I can start. Um, beginning uh, in about my, my freshman year of, of college, I was just looking for any and every opportunity to, um, like the question that was asked, asked before, be the ideal candidate um, to gain acceptance to medical school. Um, so I was doing Google searches and searching online, and I think I, I did a search along the lines of um, early acceptance and uh, humanities, and I, I ended up finding the humanities and medicine program um, just based on my interests in uh, foreign languages and international affairs and, and drama, and uh, I was able to uh, apply early during my sophomore year, and I was uh, accepted uh, around winter time in my sophomore year, and it really uh, was a life changer for me. It was it was. Uh, a, a huge opportunity to be able to explore everything that I, I was interested in throughout college. Um, being from, from learning to play the piano to, to once again double majoring and being able to, to study foreign languages and such. Um, and then also maintaining that ability uh, to commit to a, a career in medicine. Uh, a lot of times uh, individuals that are interested in, in medical school uh, aren't able to actually take the classes that they want to take and prepare uh, to be a great doctor because they're worried about research and advanced organic chemistry uh, labs and such. But fortunately, I was able to uh, take anatomy and physiology um, and a little bit of immunology in addition to all of the humanities classes that I was taking. And I really think that I was more than prepared uh, for a, uh, a career in medicine and uh, to, to get through medical school successfully. So it, it was really a life changer for me and I'm very appreciative uh, for the yearly acceptance. Yeah, I echo what Ronnie said for sure. I um, <clears throat> found out about the Humanities and Medicine program through a friend who was also applying and it did feel like the impossible had kind of fallen upon me because through those first two years of undergrad I felt incredibly conflicted both because I had all these fields of study that I wanted to pursue just for the sake of interest and felt like the pre-med requirements were getting in the way of that, but also because I felt like those fields of study were actually the things that were gonna make me the kind of doctor that I wanted to become. 
And for me, pursuing a path in medicine was always about exploring the way in which social inequalities manifest in biological ill health and understanding how paradigms of injustice affected people and, and their health outcomes. And I didn't feel like organic chemistry and physics were helping me grow in the way that I wanted to, to become a better physician. So the Humanities and Medicine program both enabled me to study hip hop and West African culture and Harlem Renaissance literature and things that were not only interesting and that I was passionate about, but things that I really do believe are gonna make me a better physician in the long run. Okay, great. Um, the next question that came in is a specific one asking if students have to declare a major before they apply. So uh, students do have to declare a major before they apply. One of the subtle differences between FlexMed and what used to be HUMED is in the HUMED program students applied in the first semester of sophomore year and at that point there are still a fair number of students who don't know what their major necessarily will be. Students in FlexMed will be applying in the second semester of their sophomore year which isn't a huge amount of time later but I think for the majority of students it's late enough that people will have declared a major. Um, so our expectation is that someone will have declared a major. It's entirely possible that even if you declare a major and you apply and you're accepted, in junior year you decide to change your major and that's totally legitimate. But we need to know coming into the process what the mix of students looks like applying to the program. So again, so we, we can maintain as diverse a class as possible with people who have interests in the biological sciences or physical sciences or humanities and the arts. Great, okay. Uh, the next question is another one for the students. Do you feel as if you were prepared coming to medical school without taking the traditional pre-med requirements? Um, so I touched on this one a little bit uh, earlier. I think I was actually more than prepared for uh, medical school coming in uh, just for the fact that I, I had so much freedom to actually take classes that I felt uh, were going to be relevant for me uh, in uh, medical school. I was able to dissect the human body twice um, where where most students aren't able to do that until uh, their first year of medical school. I had done, done that twice already um, in undergrad. I had taken a little bit of immunology, I had taken physiology, I had taken sports medicine, in addition to the uh, required year of uh, basic biology um, and, and, and chemistry. Um, so I was, I was really more than prepared and, and uh, glad, to, glad for it because uh, that allowed success uh, where we are here in medical school and I think Sonia would, would say the same. Yeah, I, I did not take any additional science classes, so I wasn't prepared in that direct way that I think Ronnie is speaking to. Um, and I will say that it takes a little bit of discipline in your own belief in, in this program, to be honest, because when I did start, I was nervous. And I think my biggest battle was feeling as if perhaps for some reason I wouldn't be prepared. Um, now, two years in, everything that Dean Muller is saying is completely true. You can look at our class and not really know who came in through the HUMED program or not. Um, so I definitely was adequately prepared in terms of the science requirements that I needed. And then again, in terms of being able to advocate for gender equality in the provision of healthcare, I think that I was so much more prepared than I would have been were I forced to take um, the traditional pre-med requirements. Okay. Uh, the next question comes in from an advisor. And the question is, as an advisor, how will this program have an impact on my day-to-day -day duties? So as a pre-health advisor on an undergraduate campus, um, I guess one of the things that is predictable is that this will um, expand the pool of people who are potentially interested in a career in medicine, uh, which is really what we want. It's one of the main reasons that we created HUMED and expanded to FlexMed. Um, it's also what probably society needs, is a more diverse group of physicians who come to medical school and that diversity ranges across life experiences, educational backgrounds, uh, racial, ethnic, socioeconomic diversity. It's critically important to the future of medicine and it's one of the things that as medical educators we know um, has been one of our greatest failings. So as a pre-health advisor there will be more people probably coming to the office and then a little bit more of a process of filtering through who's appropriate for FlexMed in particular which is very similar to the process of who's appropriate to be pre-med in the, in the traditional path. Um, we are very eager to hear from pre-health advisors in terms of being able to support you, um, answer questions, come to campus or come to your city for events that we can help figure out how to make this um, as effective for you as possible. 
So um, I think it's going to be a larger number of people and then a little bit of a challenge to understand who is the right fit for FlexMed. Okay. Uh, next question comes in asking, is it mandatory I take a gap year? If I do, what should I do? What should I be doing during that time? So maybe we can start with that by hearing from Sonia and Ronnie about whether they took a gap year and if they did what they did with that time, and then we could talk about FlexMed. You want to go first since you've been so polite to Ronnie this whole time? Sure. sure. Um, yeah, so I, I did take a gap year. It's by no means mandatory, I don't think, but for me it was important both in terms of making sure that mentally I was really geared up to, to take on medical school because that is something that unlike any other experience I think you'll have in your life, you really have to have uh, a strong sense of volition on your own to make it happen. Um, but also because I felt like there were certain passions and interests that I really wanted to delve in and commit to fully before I started med school. So um, for the first six months of my gap year, I was in Dubai um, and I was working on starting a youth center there. And then for the second six months, I got um, a grant to go back to Senegal where I had studied abroad in undergrad and I was working with local hip hop artists in starting neighborhood based junior youth empowerment programs. Um, and that was a fascinating, incredible experience for me, and again, by no means disconnected from what I hope to do. So I've been trying to do work with the West African community here in New York City um, and doing public health projects here. Um, and we have friends who've done all kinds of things during their gap year, working at the prison law office and translating that into research, and people who've done things that are totally unrelated to their medical path, but equally as important because it's enriched their lives. My uh, gap year uh, was, was really bliss. It was kind of the best of two worlds. It was a, a pseudo fifth year at Stanford where I had finished all my graduation requirements already, but I decided to uh, stay at Stanford to take uh, jazz and piano and uh, some of the sciences that I thought would be uh, a little more uh, relevant for medical school. Um, I was able to, to uh, do, do a little bit more uh, of anatomy. I was able to uh, study the immunology that I, that I talked about previously. I was in a, in a couple of plays and I did a few uh, low-budget feature films. Um, but uh, I think the, the importance of, of that year was really to just get mentally prepared for medical school because um, you, you want to make sure you're, you're in, in the right mind state and, and you're, you're ready to commit to uh, at least four years of, of hard studying and, and, and patient care. And, uh, I, I really appreciated that time to be able to, to settle down and, and get my priorities um, in order, and uh, it was a great time. So um, in terms of FlexMed, uh, gap year is really strongly encouraged by us, but not a, by, all, by any means required. Um, as Sonia and Ronnie both said, it's a great opportunity to take a little bit more time to be absolutely certain that medicine is a career you want to pursue. Medical school and everything that comes after it is all-consuming. Uh, this is a very, very rigorous program, as rigorous as they come in this country. The work is very, very hard, um, and we know that you're prepared for it once you've been accepted to the program, but the ability to take a year to really process what you're preparing yourself for is important. The opportunity to do things that you may never get a chance to do again for the rest of your life is something that we value as educators, and we know that you would value as someone who might take advantage of that. And again, it speaks to the diversity of experiences that you will bring with you and the diversity of skills you will learn over the course of that year. Okay, the next question covers some of the ground that we've already touched on, but it's, are accepted applicants required to begin at ICON immediately following graduating at their undergraduate institution? So that's a, that's a little bit of a related question. So there will be, there have always been, for let's talk about HUMED for a second. So over the course of the 25 years of HUMED, there have always been some students who really didn't want to take a gap year, and as soon as they graduated from college, they came right to medical school and matriculated. And that's terrific. And then there have been students who've taken a gap year, which we encourage. Um, and every once in a while, there's someone who needs or wants to take two gap years when they've got a particularly compelling project to work on, or they've got a Fulbright, or something that extends over the course of more than one year, Teach for America. Um, and we love those kinds of programs. And so there's a lot of flexibility, hence, FlexMed, so you can come to school right away if you're ready for medical school and feel like you don't want to add a, another couple of years. You might be an older student who started college later and is in their sophomore year, and when medical school is ready, you're ready as well. But you might be someone who really wants to explore a little bit more and take a year, and sometimes even two years out before starting. 
Um, for those of you who are on, if you want to email in questions, I'm going to uh, say it again in case you logged in a little bit late. Um, you can email your questions to explore at mssm.edu. Um, if you want to view this live stream in total at a later date, you can go to www.icon.mssm.edu backslash live stream. And I, and I will say, if you don't know, the icon is spelled I-C-A-H-N, just in case you type it in wrong. Um, and to join the live, live conversation now, just click join in the upper right hand corner of your computer screen. Okay, next question. Uh, this one will go to the students. How was the early acceptance program helpful to both of you? Once again, I, I can just uh, talk about what, what I spoke on a little bit earlier. Um, it was a life changer. Uh, my, my mom was a phlebotomist uh, when I was growing up, and she's, she still is. She's been a phlebotomist for 30 years, and I always knew that I wanted to be uh, a doctor, and specifically an emergency physician, because I would uh, you know, hear these stories that she would come home with about these doctors that, are, that were able to take care of patients with gunshot wounds or, or lacerations or you know, having asthma attacks. And uh, I, I knew I wanted to, to go into medicine, but I also had this passion for international affairs and uh, foreign languages. I, I grew up um, in about sixth grade, I started speaking Spanish uh, through a, a program through my elementary school, and I was al also interested in Arabic. And uh, I, I was passionate about so many other things outside of medicine, but I had also heard uh, that in order to get into medical school, you really have to be focused and, and be prepared to take these rigorous science courses, and you kind of have to put blinders on. Um, so coming into college, I was really fortunate to, to discover uh, the Humanities and Medicine program, now FlexMed, um, so that I could pursue these dual interests and, and really pursue everything that I would ever wanted to uh, pursue um, and still maintain that interest um, and that commitment to medicine. Yeah, I think for me, the Humanities and Medicine program was equally as valuable and important. And I think prior to understanding that it existed, I felt as if many of the things which were central to who I am were in direct conflict with what medicine was. So to me, the fact that I was passionate about justice and that I loved poetry and that I really cared about people didn't seem like it strengthened me in wanting to pursue that field, but seemed like an obstacle. And then all of a sudden, when this program you know, existed, I was given the chance to recognize that I could actually channel these things that I was passionate about and things that I recognized as strengths in myself um, and see medicine in a completely different way. And so I'm grateful when I'm you know, interviewing patients and I, and I know that this sickle cell patient is undergoing all kinds of social injustices and, and I understand them in ways that I never would have were I not able to take a course on the history of race and medicine or were I not able to understand um, the kind of stereotypes that go into how certain people are cared for. And I truly, truly am grateful for the fact that, you know, though my work's not done in growing as a human being, that I was given a chance to, to explore some of those aspects of caring for another human um, through the opportunities given to me by the Humanities and Medicine program. Okay, uh, the next question is, are accepted applicants required to begin at, I oops, sorry, for the students, could you also describe the Icon School of Medicine's program and our curriculum? Of course it's rigorous, however, what would you say makes it unique? Um, so the curriculum, once you start at the Icon School of Medicine is no different for students who applied through the HUMED or now FlexMed program and those who applied through regular admissions. I think the unique part is that you can sort of create this curriculum for yourself prior to being admitted at, at Mount Sinai. Um, I think too, I mean for me, the fact that this program even existed really spoke to the institution and what the institution valued. And so a lot of people ask me, but Sonia, you know, how can you apply second year and then you're not applying to other schools? Don't you feel like you're gonna miss out? And really the answer was absolutely not. Because to me, what, what Mount Sinai is doing is quite revolutionary in saying this is what we believe is important and we're willing to, to put this, you know, this program out there and kind of take a step of faith, if you will, based on evidence. <laughs> Um, to make sure that the, that the doctors we're creating are of a different caliber. So I, I can, um, 
I can speak to the curriculum a little bit as well and try to answer the question, but also I, I want to mention an aspect of this that we haven't talked about yet that has to do with curriculum. So from the perspective of, of the medical school curriculum itself, I think that one of the, a couple of things that we do that are critically important have to do um, with the basic principles of being a physician. So there's an enormous amount of clinical, hands-on clinical work and clinical exposure here in the first two years. Um, we're not one of the, a traditional type of medical school where you're in the classroom for two years solid and then you just start seeing patients in third year. And that exposure to patients exposes our students to the diversity of experiences that they have access to in a city like New York and in communities like East Harlem or Elmhurst, Queens, where we have an affiliate hospital and students spend an enormous amount of time. Um, there are a lot of other innovative things going on in the curriculum now, probably more detail than we should talk about at this live stream. But the other curricular impact, I think, of HUMED and of FlexMed that hasn't been talked about too much is the negative impact of being a pre-med um, on the frame of mind that a student has coming, surviving the process, coming out of college and getting into medical school. It requires such an intense focus, um, not, not just on courses or on content, which would be okay, but on exams and getting grades and getting the best possible grade and competing pretty aggressively. There's a whole pre-med syndrome that people have described. Um, and that's a big part of what we wanted to avoid initially with the HUMED program and now even more so with the FlexMed program. And I think it ties into an aspect of our school that is different, which is that we do a lot to um, undo the harm that's been done to people who've been traditional pre-meds and have been put through sort of that um, sifting process. Because that, that's just not the way you can function as a physician. You can't take good care of patients that way. You can't do good science that way. You can't be a community, a partner with people in the community if your frame of reference is to be competitive and, and make it to the top all of the time. Um, it's much more about collaboration. It's much more about team building. It's much more about valuing things in others and knowing how to bring their strengths forward as you're taking care of patients or as you're working on projects. Great. So we're getting lots of questions in now, which is great. The next question is, can you please review the application timeline for FlexMed? Is the first application cycle for spring of 2014? And can you share GPA and SAT slash ACT averages for accepted students? So the timeline for the first recruitment year is going to be um, applications that will be posted. They'll be open on our website in October of this year. Um, people will be able to apply from October into the beginning of winter. We'll have our first interview season in the spring of 2014. And then if you've interviewed, you will have your answer by the end of your sophomore year. So before summer starts, you'll know whether you're in the program or not. Um, there will be information posted about ranges of scores on things like SATs that will be on the website. There will be no cutoff. We don't, we've never believed in that and we don't believe in it now. There are people who have uh, phenomenal scores on things like the MCAT even or on SATs who do not get into any of our programs. And there are people who have scores that are uh, what you might consider to be on the lower end, but they have done exceptional things with their lives in the arts, in global health, in science, in research. Um, and we want those kinds of students in medical school. So there's, no, there's not going to be any fixed cut off, it'll be a pretty wide range of scores that are adequate, that we know will allow you to succeed in medical school, but what we're looking for really is all of the other stuff too. Okay, next question. As a social science major, I was thrilled to learn about FlexMed and the opportunity to pursue my passions for both social sciences and medicine. I intend to apply to FlexMed in the fall, but I imagine the program is very competitive. How do you suggest students stay on track as pre-med while applying so they do not fall behind if they are not accepted to FlexMed? What kind of courses did most HUMED applicants take during their freshman and sophomore years in terms of medical school prerequisites? Um, so maybe these guys can talk about it too. I can say at a baseline, um, what's probably safe is to have a year of basic biology and maybe even a year of basic chemistry. I mean, it can be one or the, we require one or the other just for the sake of applying. But if you want to be on the safe, safe side, I would think to take uh, both before would be very helpful, and that should leave people ample time to finish other traditional pre-med requirements um, if they end up applying and not getting in. I'll also say, before asking them to reply, I'll also say that, that our medical school and medical schools around the country are seeing increasing numbers of people um, who don't want to spend all their college years taking pre-med requirements, um, and then afterwards do a post back. And so there, there's a fair amount of flexibility built into the process of applying to medical school. So people who apply to this program, FlexMed, um, 
who really want to be able to learn what it is they're passionate about in college don't have to feel like the door is slammed shut because there's always the opportunity to do what you really want and then spend the time afterwards finishing up your pre-med requirements. I don't know if you guys want to talk about um, Yeah, I think I definitely hear what Dean Muller is saying. I would I would say that I recognize post bat programs can be expensive for some people. So for me, I, I shared a similar concern in applying. At the same time, I also I took that first year of bio, and then I moved on to the first year of chemistry. So I wouldn't have done anything too differently um, had I not gotten into the human program. So I began general chemistry in the beginning of my uh, freshman year, and then I moved on to general biology in the beginning of my sophomore year. But what I did differently um, was that I, I kind of piled on the classes that I, I knew I wanted to um, take um, instead of worrying about perhaps doing a research or doing a, a more uh, rigorous uh, research-based um, science uh, class learning about gel electrophoresis or Western blotting um, or what have you. I was able to take Arabic um, and I was able to take medical Spanish um, and I was able to study a, a little bit of music in, in those first two years. And, and in addition to that, I think what's, what's useful about FlexMed is that I, I wasn't afraid um, to delve into a lot of the extracurriculars and community service that I might have been uh, afraid to, to do um, because I wasn't as worried about uh, those activities and impeding upon my grades. I was, uh, I was pretty confident um, that I, I could be a, a decent applicant uh, to the HUMED program, now FlexMed. Um, so I, I just did everything in, in, in terms of uh, being a, an ex excellent student in general, um, rather than uh, focusing on being an excellent um, medical uh, student candidate. Great. Uh, another general question, um, can you discuss the three, the three tracks with FlexMed? Yeah, so um, that's something that we put on the website under the FAQs, and um, so it's a great question because it pays to clarify. So there, there are not three separate distinct tracks. Um, it, it's a process that allows us, I think we mentioned it even before, um, to monitor who's applying and from what educational backgrounds applicants are. Um, and to build as diverse a class as we can, because we want to make sure that, that each of those three is adequately represented. People from the biological sciences, people from the computational or physical sciences, and people from the humanities and social sciences. The better we mix those groups, the better the educational experience will be at Mount Sinai. There's no track difference when you come to medical school. It's the same curriculum for everyone. And there are no different differences in track requirements. It's whatever your major requires at your school is what you have to complete regardless of what major you choose. And, and I think it's another, it's a good opportunity for me to mention, even though we said in the beginning, that even at its maximum point, FlexMed will be half of every entering class, which means that the other half of the class will be people who follow the traditional path, people who've taken the post back, people who've had, um, who have applied for the MD-PhD program. And so what we're looking for is exactly that, a very, very exciting, dynamic mix of students who are coming from all sorts of backgrounds. Okay. Uh, the next question is, if I don't get in through FlexMed, can I still apply to the regular medical program? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we see tons of uh, students who've applied to HUMED in the past um, and may not have gotten in, but are determined to go to medical school, and we see their application a couple of years later, and we love to see those students again. It's actually great because we've gotten to know them, so to speak, in their initial application. Um, there's no disadvantage whatsoever in applying in the traditional path if you haven't gotten into the HUMED or now the FlexMed program. Okay, uh, next question. What can I be doing now as a high school student slash college freshman to prepare myself for applying? So if you're either, if you're on the, on the um, cusp of either, what's the best things you can do to uh, make yourself a better candidate? Um, so I'll take a crack at it. Although I haven't been a high school student in a very long time. <laughs> so uh, I think there are a couple of really basic things. Um, one is you've got to really work hard in school. So even though this is a program that's going to look for a greater diversity of students, medical school is really, really hard. Um, being a physician or a physician scientist is really challenging, and so you've got to be academically strong at a baseline. Um, the advantage of this is while you're trying to be academically really strong, we really want you to pursue your passions. We want you to decide what it is you're absolutely in love with. It could be science and research. It could be uh, music and the arts. It could be global health and social justice. And we want you to pursue that as aggressively as you can, accomplish as much as you want to in those areas, because that's going to count 
so to speak, um, in a very, very big way, probably as much as your grades are going to count. Um, so one is work hard in school, two is really pursue your passions, and three, I think, is try to develop a sense in your mind of um, why you want to be a physician. Why do you want to go to medical school? Because probably the most important question that someone's going to ask you on your interview, believe it or not, is that question. Why are you coming to medical school, and how is FlexMed going to help you be a better doctor? And you've heard both Ronnie and Sonia um, articulate that beautifully. It's the ability to express what you want to do and how you want to get there that helps us distinguish people who are really prepared for something like FlexMed um, from people who just need another year or two in college to get their thoughts together and present themselves as a great applicant. You guys want to talk about high school at all or no? I can mention it a little bit. Um, I think uh, Dr. Muller explained it beautifully that, that it's necessary to, to prioritize academics and, and make sure that you're performing well, hopefully, and whether your, your school offers uh, AP or IB or honors classes, I think those are great to, to, to work on getting into and also excelling in. Um, but in addition to that, I think it's important to try to get to know some of your teachers as well, whether that's through class exclusively but hopefully, uh, or hopefully through um, extracurriculars or, or, or sports. Um, or, or special interest groups. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there will be a letter of recommendation required from um, both your, your high school uh, faculty member as well as your, your college faculty member. Um, so it would be great to get to know uh, one of your teachers um, and also um, perform well in, in classes and also um, take leadership roles in your, your extracurricular activities. Um, it's, it's great to see that you weren't just uh, participating in some of these uh, events or sports, but also that you, you, you kind of um, took the bull by the horns and, and, and led them as well. Great. Next question is, is the admissions process different for foreign students? Uh, the admissions process is no different for foreign students. <clears throat> it's the exact same screening application interview process. The big difference, I think, for students who, um, well, the question is foreign students, but I'm, I'm interpreting that as people who are coming any, from anywhere outside the U.S. who aren't U.S. citizens. The big difference, I think, for a student who is accepted um, is the difference that they have an access to financial aid. Um, and that is a really important consideration. Um, a lot of uh, schools around the country will not provide any additional financial aid support to students who are applying from overseas. Um, and foreign students or international students are not eligible for federal financial aid. Um, so we do have financial aid programs at SANA that do help students who are international, um, but they, there's no question they're at a disadvantage because they can't apply for the same kinds of grants and loans as someone who does have U.S. citizenship. Okay, so we're nearing the end of our time here, but we'll try to fit in some, uh, some of the extra questions that have come in. Next question of those is, does already having a bachelor's degree automatically make you ineligible to go to Flexman? Yes, so um, the program is structured in a way that um, allows for sophomores in college to apply. The rationale behind that is we want someone who is looking forward to creating a college and undergraduate experience and maybe even a gap year or two for themselves um, and crafting what kind of physician or physician scientist they will be based on what they've done as an undergraduate. So if you've already got a bachelor's degree, unfortunately, um, you're not eligible for the program. If you're anything other than a sophomore next year, you're also not eligible to apply. It's really limited to people who are in their sophomore year of college. Okay. Next question. What if biological sciences and medical research is my passion? I don't consider them pre-med requirements. Should I apply to my FlexMed? Yes. You should totally apply to FlexMed because if your biological sciences interest is, let's say, uh, biochemistry, Flexman will allow you to take biochemistry um, and pursue that as an academic intellectual interest much, much more aggressively than you would if you had to take a lot of traditional pre-med requirements that have nothing to do with your biological science interest. So if that makes any sense, Flexman will give you not only the flexibility but the time to do a lot more in the realm of, let's say, biochemistry if that's what you love, including doing a lot of research, knowing that you've got a guaranteed spot in medical school and you don't have to worry about an MCAT exam, you don't have to worry about how you're going to do in organic chemistry competing with pre-meds. Um, it gives you, it sort of opens the door for you to do a lot more interesting things within your area of interest. Okay, next question. How many credits is required as a sophomore? I took a gap year semester to fix financial issues and do some research. Am I still eligible? Uh, so that's a, that's a little bit of a tricky question. I would say that the credit equivalent you have to have 
is the number of credits you would have as a sophomore. And if there are going to be people who've taken a semester or even a year off for personal reasons or for academic reasons, whatever the case may be. Um, so we're not counting number of years since you started college. We're doing it the way your college is doing. If your university or college considers to you to be the equivalent of a sophomore, then you're a sophomore and you can apply. Okay, another question for the students, a general one. What attracted you to Icon School of Medicine and what made you decide to attend? I think the attractiveness was, was actually mostly the, the ability to be accepted early, um, but also we have New York City here which with its uh, you know, eclectic cultural vibrance, um, so many different cultures here, uh, such a, a cool um, experience, if you will, but also coming from an, an entertainment background, um, it's, it's the entertainment capital um, of the world, and I, I really wanted to uh, be able to experience that a little bit on the side, potentially, while I was working hard um, in medical school, maybe in, in a bit of my time off, I could pursue that as well. I'm also one of our, our hospitals uh, here, our affiliate hospitals, Elmhurst Hospital, is one of the most culturally diverse uh, patient populations in the world as well. And I thought that um, my experience in studying different cultures and different languages um, in college uh, might help me um, in my success in, in interacting with, with different patients uh, at Elmhurst as well. So. Yeah, I agree with Ronnie's point. Definitely the first poll was the Humanities and Medicine program, of course. Um, I was already in New York City and valued the kind of things that Ronnie was talking about. And I don't think I realized all the strengths that Mount Sinai had truly until I began here, but things like the Center for Multicultural and Community Affairs, are that really is a unique center to Sinai and the degree to which students are encouraged to participate in community service and to make links between what it means to be a member and provider to a community um, and not just in like a benevolent savior kind of way but really to have a to have a relationship which is about mutual learning um, is something that I think Mount Sinai and Mount Sinai students do a very strong job at and especially as I gain exposure to other medical schools I realize how unique an experience that is. Great. Next question. Can you elaborate on the requirements, in-depth experience in which students gain exposure to human illness? So, um, so we describe that because uh, it's critically important, and as, actually it's as part of what both Sonia and Ronnie have said before, and, and we've mentioned, for people to be certain that medicine is what they want to pursue. And, and there's really no way to do that in the classroom. There's no way to do that in the lab. Um, the only way to do it is to find a doctor, find some patients, and spend some really in-depth time understanding what it means to be ill, to hear a diagnosis, uh, to be at the end of life, to manage chronic illness, to be in the OR, and there, there are literally hundreds if not thousands of manifestations of that, and we see from all of our students who come here the different ways in which they get those kinds of experiences. They get them in community clinics, they get them um, in needle exchange programs, they get them shadowing surgeons, they get them going overseas and working in hospitals in underserved parts of the world. Um, but you have to have exposed yourself to human illness. Um, it doesn't have to be suffering. Maybe you spend a lot of time with women who are having babies and are happy all the time. But there has to be some uh, really significant clinical exposure to convince us that you thought through, what is this going to mean for me as a physician? Hands on. I'm ready for it, and I definitely want to do it. OK. We'll do a lightning round with some of the final questions. Um, next question is, after graduating from FlexMed, is there much difference among FlexMed and traditional students? Uh, so, the, so the question probably is about HUMED. So the HUMED program started 25 years ago, and um, we've looked at uh, medical school outcomes themselves, so the grades that students get in medical school, um, how many honors they get, whether they get into the honor society, how many papers they publish, uh, what fields they go into. We looked, we looked at all of that, and it's essentially equivalent. HUMED students for 25 years have performed as well as their peers have. And then we looked well into people's careers, um, and we found that there really is no substantial difference between the two groups. If I might add, I think it's also hard to distinguish who might be a HUMED or a FlexMed student once you get here as early as your uh, first year of medical school. And it, it sometimes gets into your second year of medical school and you, you have uh, someone you might be pretty good friends with and you say, oh, wait a minute, you were, you were HUMED, are you were FlexMed? And I, I, I like that aspect that as soon as you arrive here on campus, you're 
just uh, like any other medical student, you're really no different. I um, mean, you're really just pursuing and fighting the same battle to improve um, health of, of the community. Humans might be a little more likely to choreograph the cranial nerves, but other than that, I would say we're <laughs> pretty much the same. Okay, great. Next question. How many applicants are accepted via FlexMed per class? So in our first year, it will be 35 out of a total class of 140. That's the same size as the HUMED class has been. Um, we're going to keep it the same size as we go through the first admissions process, and then in the second and third year, we will quickly ramp up to 50% of the class. So ultimately, um, in pretty short order, it, it, it will be 70 people per year who are accepted into the FlexMed cohort. Okay. So um, we're nearing our end of time here. We'll ask one more question. Um, how would you address the critics of FlexMed? Uh, so interestingly, from the time that we announced the program, which has been, I think, probably a month and a half or two months ago, uh, we've gotten an enormous amount of press, and all of it enthusiastic. Um, I've yet to hear one real significant criticism. We've heard of lots of people who've come up with uh, critical questions, wanting to know more detail about how it's structured, or what the timeline is, or what it means down the road. But, but the fascinating part of this, or maybe it's not so fascinating because we have had all these years of human experience, is that... Um, People intuitively get it. They get that medicine is something that a lot of people want to pursue, people who are very talented, um, who may not be good at taking lots of multiple choice tests and know that that has nothing to do with being a great doctor. And so I think people intuitively understand that this is a program that is that has been successful for many, many years um, and will continue to grow in its success as FlexMed helps expand the pool of people who are coming into medicine. Um, if there are, are, ultimately, there may be critics of the program um, but I think that will make for a very healthy discussion in the in the community of medical educators around the country because we've been um, functioning under a system that hasn't really changed a lot over the course of decades, almost a century. Um, it's time for important change. <clears throat> if other people or other schools find different ways to do something like this, I think that that's fantastic. But it really is time for us to shift the paradigm of how people are prepared for medical school. So. Um, I think we are at the end of the time now. I just want to thank everybody for coming, for listening. Um, again, if you want to watch this uh, at a later date, you can look at www.icahn.mssm.edu backslash live stream. Um, if there's a lot of interest, we are happy to do this again. So send us a flood of emails and tweets and whatever you can. Um, we'd love to show up and do this again, either with Sonia and Ronnie or maybe with two other students. Um, and we encourage you to look at the website and. Uh, and call us, email us with questions if you have them. <clears throat> Once again, it is Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City, now Icon School of Medicine in Mount Sinai. Um, and we have unbelievable resources for you to experience once you're here as a medical student. Um, so we uh, encourage you to take a look at FlexMed, take a look at our school in general, and apply. We'd love to interview you next year.